Welcome everyone to a complete tennis forehand guide. In this series, we're gonna be discussing all the essential fundamentals that you need for your forehand in order to execute your forehand with more power and yet be effective and consistent with it. Mastering these key fundamentals will help you improve your forehand a lot and whether you're a beginner or someone who's played for a while but just need to refine their technique, I uh, will be dividing this video um, into different sections so you'll be able to uh, go back and forth between different videos or whichever section you would like to watch um, or you can watch the whole series as well. Let's get started and we'll go to the first fundamental, the grip. So the very first step is finding the right grip and the grip that we use for our topspin forehand is going to be somewhere between an eastern to semi-western to a western uh, forehand grip. What those grips are, we're going to go through them right now. So if I'm holding my racket straight up like this, as I would hold a hammer in my hand, that's called the continental grip. And my non-dominant hand stays on the racket here, which gets me into the ready position. So that's my continental grip, which I use for my slices or my serves, volleys. But now when I'm just about to hit my forehand, I'm gonna use my non-dominant arm and I'm gonna switch the grip and let the racket turn in the bottom hand. So my bottom hand is not moving. The bottom hand stays still, but the top hand is rotating the racket. So if I'm straight up here, if I go slightly this way, my index knuckle is going to be on bevel number three. And you'll see that on the image on the top of the screen as well. And if I go further, now my index knuckle is on bevel number four, one, two, three, four, and that will be my semi-western grip. And if I go all the way down, so my index knuckle is actually at the bottom here, which is one, two, three, four, five, then that's called a complete Western grip. Now the continental grip will give you the flattest hit in terms of the spin. When you go to the Eastern forehand, which is bevel number three, then you get some spin on the ball. And it is also, I would say, used by a lot of the pros as well. And Semi Western, I would say it's the most used grip for the topspin. So that will give you a good mixture of uh, power and also control um, when you're hitting your forehands. So, and the complete Western gives you more spin, but it is very hard to execute because of the position of my wrist when I'm trying to get my strings to face towards the ball. I have to almost like go my hand is almost under the grip like here and I'm trying to hit it like that. Whenever I'm teaching, I always go Eastern or semi-Western and then I just tell my students to just find the grip that works best for you. There's no one right answer for this one. So as long as you're not in continental, you want to be Eastern, semi-Western, somewhere in between there, whatever feels comfortable in your hand and then try to hit a few forehands. Um, I would just like drop a couple of balls and just hit a forehand and just see what feels comfortable. Like switch it around to Eastern and just see what feels comfortable. Whatever feels comfortable for you, that's the right grip for you. Okay, so now that you know the right grip for you, the next step comes is the setup. So if I'm in my ready position, how do I get now ready to receive the ball? So in my ready position here, I'm on my toes, obviously, I'm not my heels are not touching the ground. My non-dominant hand that we just discussed is gonna switch and my bottom hand is gonna let the racket move just like that. And as I'm doing this, as I do my switch, I'm gonna rotate my left arm or my non-dominant arm doing all the work in order to rotate my body into this position. So my shoulders rotate first and my hips rotate with it. And now I'm set up to hit my forehand. And this setup right here is called the open stance forehand. If the ball is, say, a bit shorter where you're going to have to move towards the ball, then we're going to use something, we can use a semi-open stance, which is going to be something like this. So instead of this, I'm here. But the first movement is still with my non-dominant hand pushing the racket to the side. 
so I can turn my shoulders. We're going to discuss more about that in the later sections as well, why that turn is so important. And then the last setup is going to be the neutral stance. So the neutral stance looks like where my feet are together, lined up like that. So I'm going to use this service line right here to show you from this position here. If my setup is like this, this is my neutral stance. But if you look at my shoulder position, it's still the same. Now, if I'm going to go into my semi-open stance, my shoulder position stays the same. Now, if I go into my open stance, and you're going to see the shoulder position stays the same. Hope you enjoyed the video so far. Uh, in the next video, we'll be discussing the backswing and also after the backswing, when we make contact and how we're going to make contact with the ball. So stay tuned for that video. It should be out in the next few days. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe so you know when the next video comes out so you don't miss out on it. And uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye.